All right, welcome to a very special episode of Trainers Talks. I'm sitting here with uh, someone who has a master's in sports marketing, bachelor's in uh, marketing, uh, athlete herself, uh, born and raised in Northern Virginia, um, and she is the mother of four, a trainer, personal trainer, been a marketing director, had her own consulting marketing business, firefighter. Did I miss anything? Covers it. Basically covers it. All right. Well, let's give a warm welcome and a round of applause <laughs> for the lovely Jacqueline Allman. Hey, honey. <laughs> so we are, um, you know, over the last, you know, I'd say five or six years. Since we've kind of opened DWS and kind of like a fit, uh, a lot of people have come up to me, and I know people have come to you and, and asked, you know, different advice of how things are going, how it is to work with people. And I just want to preface throughout the the interview, we might have some special guests that run from the bedroom who are supposed to be in bed, but we'll see what happens. And um, but they have come up to us over the. Um, several years at you know asking how do we balance things how do we uh, work together you know what are our goals you know and what does that all look like and I think tonight uh, that topic along with many others we'll kind of get to, to dive into and uh, I kind of want to start off with um, how has sports or exercise in marketing influenced your life I mean, I grew up with three brothers, so sports has been part of my life as long as I can remember. When you're one of four and three brothers, you get outranked a lot on what you get to watch. So I played sports from, for as long as I can remember. Um, I am very competitive <laughs> due to that upbringing. But I mean, I think sports just shapes character, it shapes your ability to overcome challenges, to accept loss, to fight back. So I do feel like, you know, I've always felt a little bit at, as the underdog, being the only girl. Yeah. And so, but I think that's okay because that teaches you to always continue to raise the bar. Yeah. Strive to be a little bit better because you're going to come across there's always a point, and we tell our kids this a lot, there's a point where you're gonna come up against someone who's better than you. Yeah. And you have to learn to either work harder, work smarter, or both. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I'm, the one thing that I would say was the biggest impact is I'm not afraid of the fight, mm. ever. I'm not afraid to take on a challenge. I think you can overcome so much. Um, so I think that's probably been the biggest impact in terms of sports, in terms of marketing. I think that was something that was always very natural to me. Um, consumer behavior and psychology is always very interesting. I find myself in that mode a yes. lot. Yes. There are commercials that I'm just like always blown away by or as you know, I'll ask you, well, why did you do that? And it's just, I have this thirst for learning why people think the way they think. And it's not that I want to influence the way that they think, I want to learn more about the psyche behind all of it. So yeah. that's something that definitely is kind of, I do without realizing it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. I, it excited, I'm the one that looks at the billboards. We're not, we're on an eight hour drive and like, I don't know, I find it interesting and I love <laughs> I know. I like. I love to look at commercials and say, "Why is this commercial playing right now?" Not necessarily the commercial as much as like, "Why this one? Why did the network pick this one? Why did the commercial want to be during this time slot?" So, all of that is very interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. No. You, that uh, that is a true statement. I mean, we were just watching um, the Jordan documentary and. Facebook commercial came up and 
you were enthralled and I, <laughs> I zoned out for a minute. You're like, did you see that? Did you catch what they <laughs> it was were? It's a Mother Day commercial. Yeah, and so <laughs> that just that was that just happened, you know, less than 30, 30 minutes ago or so. So, you know, you kind of spoke about it in the sports aspect. I think one thing that people who really know you, um, and I mean like, um, you know, there's not too many people that are really, really close to us. We have a lot of people that we um, are friendly with, we care for, we want to see the best of, but we don't have too many people who are really, really close to us. But the people who are really close to us know one thing, and to, thinking about the Michael Jordan dot, is that you are very competitive. I think people have known me for five minutes know that I'm very competitive. That's true. So you, that is true. And you're very competitive, and, and, um, and I'm competitive, but I think, um, we've talked about that. Where do you think that competitive nature comes from? And also, what does that do for you? Well, truthfully, as long as I can remember, I've had this like striving to be better. And I never want to lose. And like I said, growing up with three brothers, I've always felt, even though I'm the oldest, I've always felt a little bit like I'm the underdog. I'm under anticipated and like I'm a girl and I have to prove myself and so I think a little bit comes from that I think a little bit comes from my upbringing and that I was always pushed to do better and to do more and that this is great but can it be that yeah and so I think you know um, a lot of it strives from that um, and I think there's pros and cons like I think just like in a Michael Jordan doc, sometimes my competitive nature, especially as a woman, gets seen in a negative aspect, but I also feel like it gives me this drive to just, I'm not afraid of hard work. Anybody yeah. that's met me for three seconds yeah. will know, I am not afraid of hard work, I am not afraid of the competition, I'm not afraid of the fight, which I think you're the same way. Like. This is why we went in, we started our own business. This is why we have four kids. Like we have always taken on more things than our, like people are like, how did you buy a home and start a family and move to California and start new jobs? And then, you know, we opened up the gym and we had a baby. <laughs> like, you know, we do a lot in a small time frame, but it's, I think that competitive nature, it, it allows us to not be afraid of the challenges that lay before us. And then, as we know, as business owners, you're gonna hit challenges again and again and again. And when those come up, I, I've never felt like we can't face it. I've always felt like this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, yeah. we can, not only can we overcome this, but we are gonna come out stronger. Yes. And I think I've always felt that way. And so, you know, I'm willing to take the negative connotation that comes with a woman being super competitive mm -hmm. with the ability to overcome. Like, none of that scares me. Yeah. Ever. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's it's definitely, definitely true that the hard work, I would say the thing that I, that was probably one of the things, I learned the consistency, I feel like, of what I do and what people, people uh, said that about me is my consistency of kind of getting things done, showing up, you know, putting in um, like a day. But really, I would say the skill of hard work came from you. Um, and sophomore year. <laughs> sophomore, sophomore year in college, that's where we met. And uh, you were, I was the type of kid that would I'll just go to class, I'll pay attention and that'll be enough. And I'll study a little bit and that'll be enough. But um, you're the one who would go to class, you studied, you did all the assignments, you, you know, you <laughs> Sometimes a little more. A little bit more. <laughs> and when I started to hang out with you, it's like, well, yeah, we can hang out, but I gotta study first. And I realized for me to hang out with you, I had to study. <laughs> and so that was my way of getting in to be able to hang out more with you um, over those years. Um, so kind of like moving moving through this, uh, you're, over the last couple of years, um, you've become a trainer. Mm -hmm. you are, so you're already at the top of your field as a marketer um, in the area. And then you're like, 
okay, I'm going to start to work with Cal City Fit and DWS full time. You're, even though you're a core owner, you were you were doing some of your own things uh, marketing wise. And what made you decide to be a trainer? And what decided to make you want to be a firefighter? <laughs> Ooh, okay. Well, from the trainer aspect, I mean, I think it's kind of twofold. Like I said, as a consumer behaviorist, I'm always looking at everything from the consumer side. So you might come with, to me from an idea and I come at it from the back end. So if I'm a consumer, how do I learn about it? How do I like it? How do I buy it? But I think also from the same aspect, so it's a little bit of like wanting to be knowledgeable in my field and be able to be to sell something and know what I'm selling. But I also feel like I always, as long as we have been together, mm -hmm. we've always worked out, we've always written our own routines. So I've always, I kind of just felt like it was an easy transition. Yeah. Like for me, strength training especially was something that I have done for 20 years almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it seemed like a natural evolution into what we were doing. I love it. I find it so interesting. I'm a math and science kid. I love math and science. And so I think training is a lot of that. It's a lot of like understanding load. It's understanding angles. It's understanding impact, force, torque, that sort of thing. And so it was interesting to me. And um, I also feel like it's something you're passionate about. Yes. Yeah. And so I wanted to know more about it. And I feel like one of the things that when we first started dating was like we worked out separately and then we realized we both like working out and we started working out together. Yeah. And so it was something that I think we've always continued to blossom throughout our entire relationship. Yeah. And so little secret, I taught him spinning. Yes. <laughs> what was that? 13 years ago. Yes. I taught him all the spin moves. Um, so, I, you know, I feel like becoming a trainer was just a natural evolution for me. And yeah. I have loved it. I love sharing information. I love working with people. I love learning from you and from the team. And I feel like um, I really, because it was only a few months after, probably like four or five months after I got my cert, that Tara and I started working out and we both, grew a lot in that time frame, I feel mm -hmm. like. Yeah. And so that was a fun little transition too. Yeah, your work life. <laughs> My work life. In terms of a firefighter, like, it felt natural. You know, um, my grandfather was a firefighter. I have many family members that are firefighters. So this was something that I've grown up with my whole life. Yeah. Um, it was always important to my family. And then when the Tubbs fire blew through, yeah, let me actually step in on this, because, <laughs> so, yeah, so when the Tubbs fire came through, um, was that 16? What was that? 2017. 2017. So when the Tubbs fire came through, um, you know, uh, kind of stupidly, I was trying to still push through and still do sessions up until uh, I saw the smoke just hovering over Calistoga, <laughs> and I, was, I finally conceded, and we went to the top. Mm -hmm. um, just to get some clean air uh, for the family and the kids and um, and so when we're there I I have no problem of well I say no problem I have a little problem of like being able to turn a certain part of my brain off when I need to and you your brain is firing and you were checking checking like where the fires are and what's going on and you were so on it to the point that you, I was like, you know, what's what's going on? He's like, I just want to help. I want to, I want to be a part of it. I just, I, 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 don't like being three and a half hours away from it or being away from it. I want to be in it, um, and and you know, being a part of the solution. And I think from that, just that conversation, I, I think the wheels probably started to turn shortly thereafter, after you probably found out that it. You know that that possibility was could be a reality well I think also the way that you feel about training there was this like internal yearning of like why am I not helping like yeah I can, like I should do something and I've kind of always felt <laughs> they'll kind of laugh at this I've always felt this like wanting to how can I give back how can I 
and, and give back in a way that doesn't always mean like a positive repercussion for me. So I don't know if you remember this, but when we first moved to California, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm gonna become a nurse. Do you remember yes, that? Yes, yes. So I completed four years of undergrad, oh, two no. years of master's, did my master's degree, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna become a nurse. I'm like, two more years, we're just gonna start over. And you looked at me and you were like, are you crazy? Yeah. And I think I heard him and I was like, you know what? I didn't have that love. But then this came along and I was like, I just was like, I need to do it. I need yeah. to do it. I need to go and I have to be honest. I've had so many amazing experiences in my life. Going through Fire Academy yeah. is one of my favorite. Like I loved every minute of yeah. Fire Academy. I loved it. I, did. I loved you it. Did. And I loved, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I love the opportunity to go out there. Like you never want anyone to be in a negative situation, but if I can go help you, I want to be able to do that. And I felt like where nursing wasn't exactly my calling, I thought it was, when fire hit, I knew it was it. Like I knew this was it. And yeah. it, has, it has felt right since then. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> it's, uh, you, you're, you're, you're the real deal when it comes to that. And, I, and uh, the comment I always make to her, uh, around the times because I've supported it and and then people have asked me you know are you nervous about you know your wife going out and, and, and doing something like this that could be you know very dangerous and I my viewpoint I said you know what? I tell her you're more important <laughs> just remember you're volunteering and you're more important as a wife a mother that's true a business partner and so you know within any job uh, like that, you know, kind of still keep, you know, you, you want to protect others, but you also got to, you know, there's a safety part. And I think they teach you, you guys yes, that more than absolutely. you. Yes, absolutely. You know, so. You so, are, safety is always rule number one. Yeah. So that kind of translates and that's actually a nice kind of a thing that we can work on behind the scenes for our business and stuff like that of bringing some of the skills that you're getting from yeah. being a firefighter into the workplace. You know, uh, so I think kind of talking about, we've talked about like being, being in business and um, you know, the, <laughs> you go through, if you're an entrepreneur and you're an owner, and I think anybody in life goes through this, but as an owner, you, it, I feel like when you have other people's livelihoods on your shoulders, yeah. um, you, you move a little different, or you feel like you have to at least. And what do you think has been some of the biggest hurdles um, as a business owner, um, kind of trying to operate our business? Like, how's it gonna fit PWS? Hurdles, okay. Well, I definitely feel like, you know, when we first started business, we were warned that employees are gonna be the hardest part. And so, employees are the greatest part and they are the hardest part. Yes. Like that is the, it is so fulfilling to see someone enter your business and grow and succeed and whether they take the next step with you or they go on and do something else, it's just amazing to have that opportunity yes. to impact them in that way. But in the same sense, we're all human and humans have emotions and we have things that go on in our lives outside of work. And so there's that aspect too of like sometimes things happen in people's lives and they can't show up and that's something we have to deal with or they make a mistake and that's something we have to be, deal with. So you definitely get to practice a lot of compassion yes. and empathy in this job. But I do feel like for all of the struggles, it's worth it in the sense of you get to really watch people grow yeah. within your company in your atmosphere, which is very exciting. So I would say, that's one of the biggest hurdles. It's just the, the HR part. It's amazing. It's challenging. It's just like kids. It's exactly like kids. Yeah, yeah. You love them and you try to help them grow. They're going to push back. It's part of life. Yeah. Um, so I definitely feel like, and then someday they'll leave the nest and that's okay too. Yeah. Um, so I definitely feel like that's one of the things that we pull our hair out on a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely, yeah, it's one of those, it, it, 
I think you said it well that it's the uh, it's the peak in the valley of the business in the sense that and luckily there's been more peaks than there have been valleys so that's the reason why we want to continue to do that and we're like so excited to to see uh, trainers or instructors grow um, and and uh, and, so, and we want to bring more instructors and trainers so they can they can build their careers and and just and, as we have grown, just like, exactly. we are not in the same place as we were a few years ago, and so we understand that and we respect that. Um, but you put your heart and soul into some of these people too, and so you know there's a little bit of like there's a lot of growth that happens. That's what I think what happens. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, yeah, I think that's the biggest hurdle that that we kind of have dealt with. I think a bigger hurdle, and you'll probably ask this question later. One of the other big hurdles that you and I have dealt with is understanding how do you work together? Yes. How do you, Dude, how are you married? How are you at four kids? Yeah. How do you work together full time? And I will say in the beginning, it was hard. Like we didn't know what the secret sauce was. And so I would say maybe a couple of years in, yeah. we came up with this plan of like, this is your section, this is my section, and we'll meet in the middle. And we've been pretty respectful of that I feel like yeah um, we ask each other for advice um, but inevitably we respect that person's decision yeah. in that area and that has worked out pretty well but it took us a few disagreements oh yeah and we, I mean, <laughs> and, 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 like put it all on the table we still have disagreements but I think I think the thing is that um, we're willing to have the uncomfortable talk for sure. And but I we've always believed that the other person has a valuable opinion. Yes. And so it's not like a no. It's like, yes. I hear you. Here's my opinion. And we always get to the other side. Yes. Because we, we know that how, how much stronger we are together mm -hmm. versus separated. So we go through the hurdle early on ideas and new projects or certain situations. So we get it out of the way, we make sure we're on the same page, so when we march forward into the next room as a group, um, we're on the same page. We're on the same page, and uh, it's, it's, uh... I wear devil's advocate cloak very well. Oh my god, I will too. definitely play devil's advocate, but it's, <laughs> yeah. it's more, yeah. it's not as much about not believing in the idea, it's more like, let's just get all those, the questions that we're going to get tossed at, I'm gonna give them to you now, so that when you do go in there, you can knock them down. And yeah. so I will say, I play devil's advocate to a T. Yeah, and I would say I have a high tolerance for uncertainty <laughs> when it comes to uh, you know pushing certain ideas. And I think that's a good transition of talking about like how when we we are ideas people. I mean, we we love watching certain business shows together. Um, we've listened to different business books. Um, I like watching people's different interviews and business people. Um, and so, and also people who are in the fitness and wellness industry. Um, so how would you describe how like a new idea happens? You either have the idea or I have the idea. How does that normally get presented and how does the other, what have we learned and how we have to present that idea? Well, I think it's a little twofold. So, you are definitely a big ideas guy. You think of things very top level, yeah. very macro level. Yeah. And then you'll bring them to me, you know, like, this is my idea. And I'm much more of the micro level. Yeah. So, I will come back and I'm like, well, did you think about da -da 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 -da? And that, I think, circles back to our original conversation of I'm very consumer behavior. So, if I'm entering the consumer path, I want to know what it looks like. Yeah. And you don't always get all the way down to the consumer path before yeah. the pitch, yeah. which is fine. It's that's totally fine. Yeah. And that's where I feel like that's my job as your business partner to push through that. And yeah. that's why I think we are successful at so many things that we do. And so um, I think you know. And then when I come with an idea, I tend to look at it. And like, okay, this is how I would roll it out. And sometimes you look at it on a much more macro level. Well, how does this fold into the overall plan? How do you, what are you going to do in, in six months, 12 months or, you know, and even though I tend to always look at things in like a three, 
30 to 90 day period, um, you're always like the very top line. I think that's true. Yeah, no, I mean, because because my whole thing is I'm the consistency, like that thing kind of drives in my head, the consistency part of it. So I always get nervous about sustainability of an idea and can, we might have a cool idea, but can we execute it and can it be sustainable where it doesn't put so much of a strain on us or our team to execute it? Um, and then, uh, you're right, like I have, <laughs> I have been humbled several times with my ideas where I'm thinking of something and, and for me, I, I can get so in my head, as you know, and, and I'll come to you and I realize that I have to just kind of, I need to kind of like, I might have this big idea, but I need to kind of think through it just a little bit more, give you a couple of micro details so that, and this is really purely for my own ego <laughs> in, in a way, so that you don't completely like, like you just throw a dart through it. It's like, well, you got a big thing right here that we gotta, we gotta get through if we're gonna do this. And so, um, I think that's made me sharper of like understanding, you know, you're gonna be the the toughest because um, you're gonna prepare me. Like if we're going out, we're gonna present this out. You're gonna be the toughest person to get through. So the other parts are gonna become easier. And in a way, you're gonna sharpen it because you see those micro details that I don't see. Um, to be honest with you, that's my job. That's my job is to get at you early and to be tough and to yeah. answer that. But I will also say his, his ideas are always the big budget ideas, but <laughs> they're also the most innovative and visionary ideas. And one thing I think we've always defined ourselves as and our business as and our ex essentially our expectation of our employees is we are innovators. Yeah. We are always looking on how can we push the industry forward or push the community or push our region or what can we do yeah. to push things forward? Like we were the first to jump into online fitness, like yeah. on-demand fitness in our area. Like, and, and I think that's the caveat. I mean, like we're not necessarily trying to be the first in the world or something yeah. like that. But we are, because sometimes, you know, you might have an idea, but you might be too early to where the, the community is ready to accept it or yeah. the community that you're gonna be working with, who's gonna be the consumer of it, is ready for it. And so, but we wanna, and oftentimes, we, we, we look towards being um, a leader in those type of opportunities and those ideas when we feel like the community is ready um, to, to, to take that upon and, and have them ready for something they didn't even know they were ready for. Well, and we're willing to put in the work and the time that it takes to educate people to do it. Totally, and invest in it. Invest yeah. in the time and, and yeah. sometimes money and whatever resources is needed. Um, I think kind of, what do you think I've had this question, and I know you have, you've had this question over and over, work-life balance. I think the work-life balance comes from, one, respecting each other's territories. Yeah. And so, essentially, for those who are new to us, um, you manage operations. Um, I manage more of the marketing, scheduling, resorts. You manage training. And programming and so there's a little crossover obviously schedules and programming there's crossover yeah. but we sort of respect each other's duties within those things so I think that's the, that was the first thing that helped our work-life balance yeah, yeah and then I think you know we try to actually and we're not perfect at this yeah but we do date nights where we try not to talk about work and the kids but it's life and the kids give us balance like we, yeah, I, sometimes I, yeah. it's like we gotta go to the park and we can't check emails and we gotta I gotta homeschool and we we just life happens yeah. and that we just can't do it all the time even though sometimes it's hard for us to turn that switch off yeah so I do think we we have to make a very concerted effort but I think it's not because we feel like work 
has to be done, it's because we love what we do. Yeah. And we want to talk about it and we want to continue to work and innovate and push and do all those things. So I think sometimes it's just important for us to be like, we stop. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I mean my way of saying what work life balance. I think you have to know yourself and you got to know your partner. Um, and some of that is even knowing them before you get into a, a business together. Because um, we kind of know, I mean, we, we, we've learned over the years when we want to talk about it, when we don't want to talk about it. Um, I think we're open to talk about it at almost any time of the day. Uh, yeah. I think for the most part, when we're ready to go to sleep and it's you know, in our bedroom, we, we don't Which do that. Which is very much at 8.30 p.m. Yeah, <laughs> so we're kind of past our right now. Um, <laughs> but but it's, uh, the, the, I would say, other than that, when we're having dinner, we're sitting sitting down, if we're watching a show, that something comes up that's kind of cross-relates with our business, we'll talk about it. Um, so we're, um, I think, like I said, I think have the kids, one of the beauties of having besides the, just them as their personalities, is having kids, is that. It forces you. It forces, they get out of school at a certain time, they have certain activities, they get sick. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, that's gonna, in some ways, it's, it's kind of been nice for me because it, it gives me an excuse to say the potential clients and things like that, it, it allows me to set boundaries. Um, and I think it allows you to do the same, it's like, yeah, I can't, you know, you would probably love to do as much firefighter stuff as you can or more training or more spin classes or, and I would, you know, I would, if I didn't have the kids, I'd probably continue to do more and more training and I eventually feel like I, I was burning myself out. The kids, like, no, I got to get home at five because yeah. Isabella has soccer at 5.30 and I got to be able to get her there. So, um, that has been kind of the thing. So, work-life balance, I think... I think sometimes what most people have in their head who are not in this type of lifestyle is kind of overrated. You just got to know yourself and know how you want to, what you want to accomplish and make sure that matches up with your partner and and then just execute off that and listen to yourself. I mean, like if you're starting to get a little overwhelmed, but try to do things that are sustainable and, and push as hard as you can within that level. Yeah. It's hard when you love what you do because you want to do it all the time. Yeah. But the good thing is you love your kids as much too. So you find a way to like separate so that you can do that. The lucky thing for us is we both love what we do and we do the same thing. So it's okay that we spend some time talking about it. Yeah. Um, but we do make a concerted effort. Which is expensive because when we go on dates, <laughs> we're talking business. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> uh, okay, let's, let's go to the next thing. Um, what is what is your view of like the kind of the, the fitness wellness industry, like not necessarily you mean the quarantine, but just in general? If you look at the last year and you look at the next three to four years, where do you think the fitness industry is and where it's going? Well, I definitely feel like more and more people are getting into fitness, mm -hmm. um, and just from my own sort of observations of the market, um, I would definitely say online digital fitness is gonna propel forward, but also classes. People love, and I know we're in quarantine and it's weird, but truthfully, Zoom classes are doing really well now because yeah. people still want that connectivity. So I feel like you're gonna see sort of all of these surges in bar and Zumba and Pilates and yoga because people love to be in this community and do it with their friends and like give them high fives. So I don't foresee the classes. Air high fives. Air high fives right now, elbow bumps. I don't foresee classes going anywhere, but I do think people are busy and people are more tech savvy these days. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of the digital stuff is just gonna continue to grow. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the fitness industry, the one thing that sort of scares me, and we've talked about this a lot, is just like a lot of things in the in, like not our industry, but just in social in general, and as a marketer, it hurts me a little bit to dish social, but I'm gonna do it because it happens. 
um, is I feel like there's a lot of people trying to educate fitness that are not educated. Yeah. And I, can, I get concerned about the lack of form and like teaching people how to snatch digitally is really frightening to me because that's an explosive move. It involves technique and it will give you high injury if you're not doing it correctly. And so that's one of those things that like I'm a little nervous about when it comes to digital is I think there's a lot of trainers out there that just went out there and like got their online cert and they don't really understand the importance of form, understanding weight and load. And I think sometimes too, it's not that they might understand it like internally, they might be able to perform the movement themselves, but it's, it's the whole idea of, you know, um, you know, can Michael Jordan coach? I mean, like he might be great at performing the lifts and stuff like that, but you know, as an executive and stuff and running a team, he hasn't been as well. And so that doesn't mean that it always translates just because you know how to do it. Coaching is the ability to be able to pass on knowledge to a person to have them do it at a high level. And, and that part's, you know, that part's a journey within itself. You yeah. know, like even when I work with clients, the first time they do a movement, they don't, they don't do it perfectly. And I'm not asking them to do that because I wouldn't do it perfectly the first time yeah. I learned it. But it's getting, is knowing the appropriate steps to get them to that point so that you reduce the chances of injury and you re you increase the chances of success. Yeah, um, I agree with that. I think my piece of advice would be, as you go through your fitness journey, you should shoot when you're picking who you wanna learn from. And I think, you know, we feel this way, look for someone who's certified. Look for someone who's educated themselves in that field before you just like jump on. Um, for us, you know, we don't take, we don't allow a trainer to start taking on clients until they've received their certification, until they've gone through training with us, and until they've gone through mock sessions with us and we know they're ready because this is such an, an industry where there is injuries. And I think the same thing goes for any modality that you decide to do. Yeah. I am not a yoga teacher. I'm not certified in yoga. And so you shouldn't take my yoga fit class. Yeah. That's just my personal opinion because I don't know all the ins and outs of those moves. Exactly. Now I do feel like if you have a degree like in exercise science and you understand motion and movement and that sort of thing, it, it opens you up to be able to do other things which I do think is important, but I just feel like right now there's so many people out there claiming to know how to do the perfect squat, and then you watch it and you're just like, that is not a perfect squat. Yeah. And so you just have to be educated. Like, that. that's kind of my yeah, thought. Yeah, and continue to read and learn and, and yeah. understand. At least, I would say it's not even that, it's like you at least know why you're doing the movement you're doing. What are you targeting? What are the muscles? Because sometimes like there, I've seen some weird kind of funky kind of movements, but I've also heard when, when the person instructor says, this is the reason I'm doing it, I'm doing it. So they stay loose because they're simulating, you know, if it's a ballet dancer or, or, or it's um, somebody who skis or somebody, or somebody who just needs to get out of their head. Sometimes if they're doing it for that reason to have them do something kind of, unusual and they have the true purpose behind it I'm I'm more okay with them exploring that because they have a plan when they're doing that and they're like oh you know I just thought it would be I saw it on this I saw it on Instagram so I'm gonna try it yeah like, what are you targeting and what's the goal yeah so. I think that's what you got to ask yourself so yeah. but I do think it's exciting I think more and more people are feeling empowered because their body is doing things that like maybe it couldn't do before mm -hmm. or they're seeing like how strong they can be or how fast they can be you know those sort of things so i think that's exciting yeah that the more people learn like i it, you don't have to look a certain way but if your body is achieving if you're grateful for the movement your body is giving you yeah you know what i mean i think that's where people should be focusing Totally. And not so much that like, I mean, look at Serena Williams. She's not 
a size zero, but she's the freaking athlete of the, the decade. Yeah. So, it, whatever, you, it's, there's no more stereotypes anymore, which is what's so great about it, is it's like, just celebrate the movement that your body can do. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the important thing. So, um, I have one more question for you, and I think you might have some questions. A couple. Uh, honey, I want to talk. When do I get my first paycheck? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, so, um, what do you think is, uh, my last question is, what do you think has been our visit, biggest success as uh, a company or just in general? Okay. Ooh, biggest success is hard. Here's the thing I'm most proud of okay. that okay. I will say. Let's go there. Is... I love what Calistoga Fit has become and what it means to so many people. And when I say Calistoga Fit, I'm going to bleed that into like DWS because I feel like it has an effect that like, I don't know, I just, you know, you start a business and you start this thing and you have this idea in mind, but you don't realize what it's going to mean to people, Yeah. to members. like. We had a member be like, I want my birthday party to be a workout with you guys, which is like mind blowing to me. Yeah. And it's, you know, and, and, and it's just like what it does our instructors, how our instructors have just feel, felt like they have had the opportunity to flourish. So I think the thing I'm most proud of is the community, both internally and externally that we have built. Like when we say fit fam, I have hundred percent mean fit fam like we these are people that we like go to dinner with yeah. that we sweat with we cry with we talk about our challenges with and so it really is a family yeah and that's the thing that's my favorite thing about what we have accomplished cool and also the representation of like we've done a lot of hard ass work yeah. Our asses off. <laughs> In case there's any question yeah. about it, we have worked so hard, and I feel like it has been amazing to be able to do that with you, and like grow this, and like yeah, yeah it's who cool. knew? High five. We can actually do that. <laughs> no, I, I won't <laughs> bring the elbow. Blade on. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, I think that's a wrap. All right, well, we might have to do this again, because obviously I didn't want to, we could have talked for eight hours if we really wanted to. But thank you again for joining us for Trainers Talks, for joining and checking, t checking out my very, very, very special guest, <laughs> Jacqueline Alton.